Hi, I'm Catherine Costa from TrueNorthArts.com. This is video three in my Astrology 101 art journal series. Now, if you've missed the other two videos, not to worry. If you look in the description below, you'll find links that will take you back so you can check those out. There are six videos in this series, and the first four, we are looking at exploring the different qualities and aspects and characteristics of those 12 zodiac signs. Now, I know many of you know what your sun sign is. You might even know what your moon or your rising sign is. We are so much more than any one sign that makes up our horoscope. In fact, you are just like this diamond, and each of those different facets and sides of you are those different zodiac signs that make up your unique horoscope. And when you understand those characteristics and qualities of each of those facets of you, that's how you can shine and sparkle. It's what makes you a precious diamond. So before we begin today's topics, I recommend that you pull out your natal chart, your birth chart. And if you don't have one, you can pause this video and head on over to astro.com to get one for free. I want to bring your attention to the box to the left of that wheel. And in that box lists all of the zodiac signs that make up your horoscope. You'll see here that I have highlighted in a lovely lavender color the piece of information I want you to focus on. Make a list of all of the signs that you see, not only in the top part, but also those two that are in that little row just below. The next step is to tally up how many times that sign shows up in your chart. Looking at my chart, you see that my sun sign is Leo. But there are a lot of other signs that are there too. In fact, I only have one instance of Leo. Look how much Virgo there is. Well, there's also Cancer and Aries and all these different signs. And you're going to find in your own horoscope, your own list of various um, zodiac signs. So definitely have that in front of you. Because as I talk about all of these different signs, it's helpful to have that list in front of you so you can say, oh, this sounds like me. Is that on my list? Now, you may or may not relate to the very specific piece of information, the details that I'm sharing about each of the signs. That's why we're going, there's so much about every, every sign. And that's why there are multiple videos so we can go deeper and deeper. While there are some qualities, say, of Leo that I can really relate to, there are others that don't. And that's where other ones come in. This is an opportunity in this series to start exploring those many facets that make up the beautiful gem that you are. This video, I'm going to cover two concepts. Orientation, and there are three different orientations. We're going to look at qualities, and there are three different qualities. And then I'm going to demonstrate a couple of projects you can do in your art journal. One is to create a zodiac chart that reflects those qualities. The other one is to create a, uh, a table that helps you to remember and, and, and take notes in a fun and creative way. Then we'll end this video with connecting the dots. And this is where we look at what we've learned and covered in this video and apply it to you and see how does it show up in your chart. Now let's take a moment to review those four classical elements that we covered in video number two. Each of these four elements are different ways that people with these signs navigate the world. The first one is fire. So a person with a lot of fire in their chart, they are the type that move through the world based on what they are inspired by. So these are people who are full of a lot of enthusiasm, energy, they're spirited, and they're known for taking action. Those with earth signs. The earth is all about the body, the physical body, but also the material world. People with a lot of earth are focused in on their physical reality and how they can make 
their ideas and their dreams manifest in the world. And they're very good at manifesting. They're very good at making things happen. The third sign is air. This is the realm of the mind. These are thoughts, ideas, how one communicates. So a person with a lot of air, the way they navigate the world is through what they're thinking and how they take in information by that cognitive process. And the fourth and final element, in contrast to all of the others, navigates the world through their feelings, through their emotional body. They feel things, they sense things. It's not only their feelings, but also their intuition. Now these four elements, if you wanna learn more about them and dive deeper or actually see how much fire, earth, air, and water you have in you, definitely check out and review video number two. You'll find a link to that in the description below. Orientation refers to the direction one's focus naturally goes in. For example, the first orientation is personal. So for the first four signs of the zodiac, all of their intentions are really focused inward on the self. They're very personal. Look at the key phrases of these first four signs. Aries, I am. Taurus, I have. Gemini, I think. Cancer, I feel. So the motivation is coming from within and applies to the self. And one thing to note is that there is an example of each of the elements, fire, earth, air, and water, in each of the orientations. For this next orientation, I recommend pulling out the reference guide that I designed to go with the stencils. And if you don't have a copy of it, pause the video now and you'll find a link to it in the description below. And with this next orientation, there is some different key words that I introduce for the next four symbols. And the reason being is that hmm, it's hard to just pick one word that captures the essence of all of each of the signs. And so I wanted to introduce in light of this orientation, another word to help fill in the picture so you can understand the sign better. So we move from a personal orientation to an interpersonal orientation where the motivating factor is connecting with others. Those signs are Leo, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. Taking a look at Leo in your handout, the key word there is I do, and they're very action oriented because they are a fire sign. But here let's get into a more of a distinction of how they do. They're motivated to show, to show others. They love show and tell. Next, we come to Virgo. And on the handout, the key word is I analyze, super analytical. But the thing to know about Virgos is that when they're analyzing something, it really isn't coming from a place of ego. They're really focused in on a system and looking at how to improve, make improvements to be of service to others. So here, the key word is I serve. Next is Libra, right? We know Libra as the one who balances and harmonizes. Libra is really focused on relationships and has a high interest in relating to others. So here, I relate. And the fourth one in this category is Scorpio. Now, Scorpio in the handout is described as I desire. Well, Scorpios are so deep and they are all about diving into those deep waters and looking at the wounds and looking at the underlying issues of the self and transforming that, right? So they're the healers that transform and go deep. We move from personal to interpersonal to transpersonal, from the self to the other, to transcending that and really connecting in a more universal way. Here are the signs, 
are Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. I would say one word that describes these signs is detachment. Now, that may not be true if somebody has these signs and they have other signs that make up their chart, but if they're very dominant in one of these four signs, detachment is a strong quality in them. That detachment means it's not about their ego, they're not motivated by that, and they're also not motivated necessarily about connecting interpersonally with people. So they may come across kind of cold and indifferent. Let's take a look at the distinctions of these four signs within this orientation. Sagittarius, I seek. So this is the philosopher of the zodiac. This is the one that's exploring the world and curious about concepts that are universal and that are outside of everyday um, doings. Capricorn, I utilize. Capricorns are high in utility and are interested in utilizing things in order to move forward on a goal. Aquarians are interested in innovation. They're not motivated to innovate for themselves or necessarily to relate to other people, but more just focused in the idea of that dynamic process of innovating. Pisces, I imagine. Pisces are the dreamer. They are interested in exploring how they can realize those dreams. Again, it's not motivated by the ego and how it's going to be self-serving or even serving others. It's more about having this beautiful dream and how can that be realized. All right, moving on to our second topic, which are the qualities within the zodiac signs. And the, there are three qualities, and the first one we'll look at is pictured here, and that's the cardinal signs. You can see from the way the chart is colored that these signs are located opposite one another on the chart and also at a 90 degree angle. Cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. And each one is a different element. Aries is fire, Cancer is water, Libra is air, and Capricorn is earth. Cardinal signs are those who are initiators. They're enterprising, outgoing. They are the originators. They're the ones who are motivated to get projects or initiatives started. The second quality are known as the fixed signs. Starting with Taurus, the earth sign, Leo, a fire sign, Scorpio, a water sign, and Aquarius, an air sign. Just as the name fixed implies, these signs tend to be slow to change. They can be really resistant to change and stubborn, but they are the perfectors. And where the cardinal signs are ones to initiate a project, they don't always have the wherewithal to follow through. They're the initiators. It is the fixed signs that are the ones who get things perfected and dialed in and, and have that follow through. They're the ones you want on your team. They're the doers. I'm going to stop here for just a moment and talk about why I picked the colors that I did. Now, when you go to create your own qualities chart, and you'll see the one that I'm going to demonstrate, I don't use these same colors. You can use any colors that you want. But you'll notice that the first color for the um, cardinal signs I picked was red. The second color was blue, and that was for the fixed signs. I'm working with those primary colors. So talking artist to artist, those primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. They're primary because you cannot mix any other colors to make them. And I thought, oh, well, you know what? This is a chart of three different qualities, and why don't we work with the primaries? But you're going to see that the third color I picked is not a primary color because that would be yellow. And for one, <laughs> you, you introduce yellow, it's going to be a very garish, high contrast. It just... Ugh ugly and I love beauty but 
I was thinking, okay, well, what would be a good alternative? And I was thinking, well, I love orange and orange looked really good. Uh, it had a nice energy to it. And, and, and that's the color of creativity and flexibility and it's mutable. I'm like what else is mutable? And then it dawned on me. So you'll see that the color I chose is the one that you get when you mix those two primaries of red and blue. Look for it. Violet. Yes, you get violet by mixing red and blue. It's a great example of synergy. The mutable signs are Gemini, an air sign, Virgo, earth sign, Sagittarius, fire sign, and Pisces, a water sign. Now, people with these signs are really flexible. They're versatile. They're adaptable. They can easily pivot and change depending on how conditions change, circumstances may change. They're the most resilient. So the cardinal signs are the ones that get things started. They are the initiators. The fixed signs are the ones who will see the project through. They stay dedicated to those mighty details. They, they're constant and uh, reliable. The mutable are the ones that come in and help out, especially if conditions change and the fixed signs get stuck. So if they, they're stubborn and they're getting caught in a fixed way of looking at something or doing something, the mutable signs are the ones who can help pivot and move and change things. They're the change. They'll change it up. So let's take a closer look at those three qualities and their characteristics. Like I mentioned before, the cardinal signs are the initiators, they're enterprising, they're outgoing, they're originators. But what the cardinal signs need to watch out for is they may have the tendency to start things but not finish them. You know, these are people who have lots of great ideas, they get started, but their follow through isn't quite there. Maybe that they're impatient, they're dissatisfied. They have so many interests that they get overcommitted. Another characteristic of cardinal signs is that they can be really forceful with pushing through their ideas to get things started. Now those fixed signs are those perfectors, the finishers. They are steadfast and they are determined to see things through. But where they get hung up is they can be slow to change, they can be stubborn, they can be rigid, maybe even obsessed and they can get caught in their habits, the way that, that they've always done things. Now the mutables, as I mentioned before, are very flexible, versatile, adaptable, they're changing. What they need to be careful of is that they can be very scattered, unfocused, they can be inconsistent. They tend to be the worriers. They get restless and can be indecisive. Let's take a look at each of these qualities one by one and look at the quality and how it pairs with the four elements. So when you pair a cardinal, which is initiating things, and a fire sign, which is an action oriented, you get Aries, the pioneer. Cardinal sign that is very initiating, paired with earth, about the material realm, you get Capricorn, which is the governor. This is the manager. This is the person who takes these ideas, these initiating ideas, and makes them happen, creates goals and strategies for how to, how to move forward. The third element is air. So when cardinal, that initiating force, combines with air, we get Libra, the diplomat. The fourth element is water, and the way a water sign that's all about emotions takes initiative, well, that shows up as Cancer, the nurturer. Now let's take a look at the fixed qualities and the four elements. Now the first one is pairing up fixed and fire. Fixed is having that constancy, that focus, that follow through, and fire is all about passion and enthusiasm. That combination shows up in Leo, the performer. The fixed sign combined with Earth is about making things happen in a consistent way. This is Taurus, 
the builder. So fixed in air, that realm of the mind and thinking, shows up in Aquarius, the reformer. Aquarians have these unique ideas. They're innovative. And because of their constancy and they're fixed on those ideas, they are excellent in translating that those ideas and staying the course to reform and make big, unusual changes. The fourth and final element combines fixed and water. Water's about the emotions. And this shows up in Scorpio. Scorpios have the tendency to not only feel deeply, but really get stuck there. And in that deep dive, they're able to transform because they're spending the time and they're sticking with that focus of being able to go in, go in deep, and then transform that and become the healer. Moving on to that third quality, mutable, and looking at it in terms of those four elements. The first one being fire. Mutables are those adaptable, flexible type of people. Fire is having passion and being inspired. These come together in Sagittarius, the explorer. Good old Saggy can't sit still and loves to be on the move. So it's not going to stay fixed in any one place where they, they are very active and always seeking to learn and to discover. They're, the, they're very adventurous. When that mutable, flexible quality combines with Earth, you get Virgo, the analyzer. And while Virgos form strong opinions, they don't fixate on them. In fact, they're very adaptable if you can give them a good reason and help them see the rationale. Mutable and air. So this is someone who's really flexible in their thinking. And that is Gemini, the communicator. The last element is water. So water's about emotions. When we think about Mutable, what comes to mind for me is someone who's flexible and can go with the flow. And that sign is Pisces, the dreamer. So let's take a look at this now from another perspective. Let's look at it from the perspective of the elements and comparing all of the fire signs and all of the earth signs. We're going to look at them in light of those qualities of cardinal fixed and mutable, as well as those orientations of whether or not they're personal, uh, interpersonal, or transpersonal. Let's start with the fire signs. I can really relate to the fire element because I have both Aries and Leo in me, and my husband is Sagittarius. So the way this shows up for me is that I have lots of ideas and I'm always starting new things and picking up new interests and I am so enthusiastic about them. The Leo in me falls in love with the idea so much that that fuels me. People will say, I've never met someone as driven as you. And it's because I fall in love with the idea. And with that fixed fixation that Leo has, that Leo in me, it keeps me staying the course. Now, what happens is I can get very blindsided by just having only eyes for whatever my passion project is at the moment. And my husband, the Sagittarian, is the one that can bring some objectivity to that. So he's very independent. We're both very independent. But he helps me to see things and step out of and getting stuck to whatever that project is. So that's a real distinction there. So they, the, the Aries will get things started. The Leo will just love and just adore and just stay with it. Sagittarian will be, hmm, I'm going to keep going and exploring other possibilities. These earth signs, earth again is about the physical material realm. The first sign here, the cardinal sign is the Capricorn, the governor, the manager, the leader. And they're not personal, right? They are objective. They're focused on goals and, and reaching something outside of themselves. While the Capricorns are initiating 
those goals and objectives. You find that the Taurus is the type to stay the course on making it slow and steady, making it happen. Whereas the Virgo is analyzing the systems and always seeking to make them more efficient with a focus on how it can be useful and of service to others. So let's compare and contrast the three air signs. Again, air signs are all about the mind, the thoughts, ideas, and communication. The first sign here is Libra. Libra is a cardinal sign and is focused on interpersonal relationships, creating harmony. It is the diplomat. In contrast, you have Aquarius, who is very fixed on its unique and innovative ideas, isn't quick to change those ideas, but that's really helpful because that's how um, big reforms happen. And then you have Gemini, who is mutable. This is the very flexible sign. This is the sign that learns from others and applies that to better understanding oneself. Not all water signs are the same. Let's compare and contrast these three signs. Water, again, is about the emotional body. It is about exploring the world through feelings and intuition. The first sign is cancer, and that is a cardinal sign. And as we've talked about before, this sign is all about nurturing and connecting with others. So those personal connections, especially with family, very important to cancer. Scorpio goes into the deep waters. And when we talk about deep waters, that is going into the unconscious, the, the deep emotional wounding that one may have. Scorpios are not afraid to go deep and to explore and they will stick with it until they, they get to the bottom of those underlying issues. Uh, when they have, they've learned the lessons and they then become the healer. They take their knowledge and their experience of transformation and they bring it to others. They're deeply caring even though they have this reputation of being the scorpion with that stinger. It's true, you do not want to cross a Scorpio, but they will be your lifelong friends, very dear, uh, very loyal, uh, so don't cross a Scorpio. The last sign is Pisces. Pisces is the mystic, the dreamer. Pisces is highly intuitive and psychic. The symbol itself is of two fish that are tethered together and they're trying to, to swim in two different directions. When a Pisces transcends, uh, they're able to connect the material with the spiritual um, and realize their dreams. Here's a look at some of the supplies that I used for both of the projects in this lesson. Starting with the paper pictured on the left, you'll see I'm working with the Canson watercolor pad. I love that it's spiral bound. You want to look for paper that is 9 by 12 and it's a heavy weight. It could be a watercolor paper or mixed media. For the stencil, it's the Zodiac chart stencil that you can get from Stencil Girl products. You can see that here. It has the wheel and the 12 Zodiac glyphs, the signs. The paint is an inexpensive craft paint that you can find at your craft store. Uh, for this lesson, you're gonna be working with colors that you love, anything that, that delights you. So no worries about having the right color. If you like it, it's the right color. I love working with the makeup sponges for applying that paint. Um, but you're welcome to use whatever you want or whatever you have. To the right, you'll see some washi tape. If you're new to washi tape, oh, it's so much fun to add to journals and projects. It is a Japanese tape, and basically it's a masking tape that has a pretty pattern to it. So, so one of the projects we're going to be masking off 
an area so we can keep a, a space clear. So you could use masking tape for this. Uh, you don't have to have washi tape, but let me tell you, it's a lot of fun to collect it. If you do, look for ones that have um, expressed the colors or the motifs of those four elements. And then you'll see in all of these videos, my favorite tool for writing and making little notes is the Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. There are other things that I use, you'll see them in the video, and with all of these supplies, I do put links and a list in the description below. So go check that out if there's something specific you're looking for. The three colors I'm working with today are the Purple Sunset, Peacock Teal, and the Ultramarine Blue. I'm using a recycled plastic lid to use as my palette. And notice how I tapped that makeup sponge to discharge some of that paint so it's not so heavy on there. And you just tap it along. You can even use a paper towel to kind of lift off some of that paint if you'd like. And you start with that wedge on the left like we seem to always be doing right with these lessons. And I'm going to talk more about why we're, we're starting with Aries in that left spot in the fifth video actually. Um, but you see we are coloring in the cardinal signs and we start with the one on the left. We go 90 degrees, the one on the very bottom, 90 degrees again, which is the wedge across from the first one. And then moving up 90 degrees to the one on the very top. So I like how visual this is. All right, picking your second color, then you just tap away and you follow the lead of the first one. So after the cardinal are the fixed signs and we color in the wedges just next to those, just to the right of those. And then we peel up our third color. Now, this sponge was a little old tired. I hadn't washed it, so I am cutting off the edge so I can get a nice, nice soft spot there. I'm kind of rough on my materials. <laughs> I don't always wash them as I should. I'm better with paint brushes, but with these makeup sponges, sometimes I'm a little lazy. I admit it. True confessions. <laughs> Once you have it all the way painted and you lift it off, it's always fun to reveal that, you pull out the other part of the stencil, which has the symbols. We're starting with Aries and we're working through the natural progression. So you take a pencil and you just trace the symbols. The, the symbols are arranged in that natural progression, so you don't have to have it memorized. Um, although if you keep doing these projects, you'll get to know them. Then I pull out my white gel pen. Because it's such a strong, vibrant background, uh, the white really uh, is offset. It, it really stands out, it has good contrast. You may, however, if you've picked a light color, may not want to use white, you might want to use something dark. One thing I'd like to point out as we uh, watch me fill in these, notice how um, the Taurus is a circle. I see a lot of you tracing the stencil, but not filling in the gaps that are there. So this is the way the symbol really looks. It's a circle with the, the little wiggly thing at the top. That's the horns of the Taurus. And here with the Gemini, notice how the two pillars, they connect that top and bottom line. It actually symbolically has meaning. So you want to connect those. With the Cancer, those are a full circle. See, so in a stencil, we have to have gaps in order for, you know, you not to have a bunch of pieces. So, you know, we see the circle here for the Leo. That's the Leo's head, and this is the mane. Look at that. And of course, you know, there's some spots where I was heavy handed and it bled through the stencil. So I clean it up, no big deal. Sometimes I take my time more, and that happens less, but. Yeah, it is what it is. All right, moving right along to Virgo, you can see how we, that gets traced. And there is the little gap, that bridge that we need to um, fill in there. It's what we call crot uh, those little gaps in the stencil, because you can't have a full circle. You can't have a full shape, because it will just fall apart. So we have these gaps, and those gaps are called bridges. And whenever I draw between that space between, I call it crossing the bridge. And not all of the symbols have bridges in them. This Libra one doesn't have it. And oh, there we go, cleaning things up. <laughs> and I bumped into the white, the wet gel pen. That happens. Watch yourself. <laughs> uh, and then 
Scorpio. And Sagittarius is next up. That arrow pointing upward and outward. Now with the Capricorn, this one also has a bridge that we need to cross. If you notice as we loop around, see that that's the tail of the goat. And here we have Aquarius. So this looks like water, waves of water, but actually it's an air sign. And think lightning bolt. Aquarians are all about innovative thinking. And if you, if we look at a lightning, when lightning strikes, that can help us shift perspective. So that's a way to remember that a, uh, Aquarius is not a water sign, it's an air sign. And the last one was Pisces. All right, so then I took the paints and I wanted to create a little legend. It's a little bit sloppy here, but I kind of like it. You know, I've grown to like it. Initially when I did, I'm like, eh, but now I'm like, huh, I like it. So I wanted to create a legend so I can have some notes so I can remember what this chart is about. Once those, um, so underneath it, I just wrote a couple of keywords. Uh, the first one, uh, those are the cardinal signs. They're the initiators, they're enterprising, the fixed are the finishers. They're slow to change and the mutables are adaptable and versatile. So now that those other inside uh, colored spots are, painted spots are dry, I can write in the label, fixed, mutable, and cardinal. For the second journal page, I've started off by pulling out a roll of washi tape. Washi tape is a Japanese, uh, basically colored, patterned masking tape. And you can certainly use masking tape or painter's tape for this. Uh, I liked the narrowness of the size. And in this particular um, washi tape, this is a color and a pattern that I'm not really all that crazy with. And so it's great to use it like a masking tape. And you'll see. I took three strips and put them on the page to break them up into three columns. So that way I'd have a column for the cardinal, a column for the fixed, and a column for the mutable. And then took my sponge and just painted in and pounced in that color of each of those that I had used in my chart. Because here I want to create another reference for exploring these relationships of these uh, three different qualities. Then when you pull it off, you can see you've got a nice clean line. I didn't measure the, I just eyeball things. I tend to do that. Next, I pulled out four rolls of washi tape, each one to represent one of the four elements. The I selected this first pattern to represent fire because fire signs are action oriented and that chevron arrow like design really connotes a feeling of movement. This second pattern I selected for earth and you see that green like the forest and also that downward pointing triangle that reminds me of that feminine yin quality of looking within. This third roll with the feather represents air. And this fourth one, I didn't have a lot of blue tapes or anything watery. This is the closest thing that I found. and I think it works for that water element. So to mark off the various rows, I just pull out this washi tape and I use each one to represent each of the sections, starting with the fire, and the earth, and I'm not measuring this out. I just wing things. That's just the way I like it. You know, carefully measuring things out. I had a ruler just in case I was so inclined, but I don't. You might want to, you certainly, if you want to measure things out more, you go for it. Um, and then the last one there, that's the water one. So instead of having the label at the top, it's going to be at the bottom. Then I take my stencil, and I draw in those zodiac signs. This is a great way of reviewing. So that first row, those are all the fire signs. And again, that column goes cardinal, fixed, immutable. 
And now I'm going in and I'm drawing in the with a pencil, tracing the stencil for those earth signs in the order of cardinal, fixed, immutable. Now we're doing the air signs. It's just a fun way of doing notes where we're intersecting these two different aspects of them. And then the water signs. And I pull out that white gel pen, color it in, fill it in, and then I wrote those words that describe them. Aries the pioneer, Sagittarius the performer, and sorry it got kind of cut off there. Um, and so, uh, but again, all of this is review from what we studied before. We got Capricorn, the governor, Taurus, the builder, That would be Virgo, the analyst. That one up above, that was Leo. Um, no, 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 that was Sagittarius, the, the explorer. And then here's Libra, the diplomat, Aquarius, reformer, Gemini, Communicator. Cancer. The Nurture. Scorpio. The Healer. And Pisces, the Dreamer. And by doing this, working with these symbols and taking notes like this, it helps to reinforce and learn these symbols. It's a fun way to learn the symbols, right? The glyphs. Then I took out some markers, some colored Sharpies, and I wanted to make a note that these were the fire signs, and I did that in red. Oh, back out, now you can see that Sagittarius Seeker one. Then green for earth, silver for air, blue for water. Now you can make your own chart and you can organize it in your own way. This is just one idea. You don't have to copy me. In fact, I love it when I see how you're going to do it. And to finish it off, I labeled each column uh, at the bottom instead of it being at the top. Mine's on the opposite side to the bottom. So I labeled the first one cardinal and the second one fixed. And the third one, mutable. And you know, looking back, I think um, I'll probably go back and with that white gel pen and brighten that up a little bit. I don't like that. It's hard to read that. But now I've got these notes and I may even go back and add some more to them at another time. I love this part. This is where we connect the dots. We take what we've learned and then look at your natal chart and see how these qualities in today's lesson, how the qualities of cardinal, fixed, and mutable show up. To the left of that zodiac wheel, there is a, a chart. The columns are labeled C for cardinal, F for fixed, and M for mutable. Now total up the number of items in each column. Count the planets and the AC and the MC. And don't count these two symbols. They represent the True Nord and the Chiron. Oh, now, not only do I love the connecting of the dots, but what I love even more is when I get to hear from you. In the comments below, tell me, what does your chart say? When you tally that up, are your signs mostly cardinal? Are they mostly fixed or mutable? And do you relate to that? Does that make sense to you? Do you feel like you're like that cardinal um, type of sign where you're initiating things and you love to start things and or maybe you're the one that's the steady Eddie, the one that everyone can count on to see things through or that mutable, that versatile quality of 
being flexible and showing and helping others to say, hey, you know, it's okay that things get mixed up. This is how we can do something differently. Tell me, tell me which ones, or, because I'd still love to hear from you, even if you don't want to answer that question, or maybe you don't have your chart and you're like, whatever, I'd still like for you to say hi. I mean, you could even comment about my scarf and what do you think of this color combination? Like even something as simple as that. I kind of like how the blues in this and the earthy tones really go with the teal. How cool is that? And then look at my earrings. I posted these on Facebook. Today is Halloween. I don't know when this is going to get published because there's a little bit of time from here to then the final editing and everything to get it live. Hopefully maybe tomorrow. But Today's Halloween, Halloween with a full moon. And because it's the second full moon in the month, it's a blue moon. It's a full moon in Taurus with the sun in Scorpio. Really cool, which is a great segue now that I think of it, because the next video, we're going to be talking about lunar cycles and astrology. We're going to be focusing in on the new moon and the full moon. So for example, you might be like, what's the difference between a Taurus full moon and a Taurus new moon or a, or a Scorpio full moon compared to a Taurus full moon? We're going we're gonna to look at that and I'm going to show you a chart so you can even predict and know and anticipate when it's going to be a full moon and a, a new moon in terms of what signs we're going to work through. Yeah, in fact, you're going to look at it and be like, oh, that's how it works. I remember feeling that. Now, the other thing we're going to look at is what we call polarities. So one of the essential questions we're going to be exploring is, do opposites really attract? All right. And if they do attract, are opposites good for relationships? Do they make lasting relationships? And we're going to explore all of that and more in the next video. If you don't want to miss out on this, be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can sign up for this series. Um, yeah, we're like halfway through. We're halfway through. This is a halfway through mark. Can you believe that? So I'm taking my time and maybe um, a couple weeks before the next one's out because I've got a new schedule and a new lifestyle that I'm adjusting to. So I don't have as much time for these videos, but you stay in tune. Subscribe to my newsletter uh, to the Astrology 101 series and you will get updates when each new video comes out. Thank you for joining me. My name is Catherine Costa from True North Arts, your instigator of soulful and creative living.